In 2001, the FDA issued a warning. Comfrey products disappeared from store shelves overnight. A plant used for over 2,000 years suddenly became restricted. Ancient physicians called it knit bone. Farmers knew it as black gold for soil. The ban targeted internal consumption due to specific alkaloids. But the real story runs deeper. Comfrey produces more biomass per square foot than almost any cultivated crop. Its roots plunge 15 feet down, mining minerals unreachable to other plants. This creates the most potent natural fertilizer known to traditional agriculture. Modern chemical companies couldn't patent it. Ancient manuscripts describe entire valleys fertilized by comfrey alone. Roman soldiers carried it to heal wounds and enrich depleted campaign soils. The restriction applied only to human consumption, yet gardeners remain unaware of its transformative power. One plant can replace an entire fertilizer budget. The question remains, why did this knowledge fade so completely? What happens when a free, renewable resource threatens a billion-dollar industry? Nature offers unlimited fertility, but someone decided to keep it quiet. Comfrey operates through a mechanism modern agriculture ignores. Its taproot descends deeper than tree roots in some soils. As it grows, it pulls calcium, potassium, phosphorus, and trace minerals from subsoil layers. These nutrients rise into the leaves. When leaves are cut, they release these minerals in plant-available forms. This process is called nutrient mining. No synthetic process can replicate it. The plant regrows from cuts within weeks. A single established plant yields four to five pounds of nitrogen-rich material per cutting. Multiple harvests per season become possible, but nature hides another secret within the mechanism. The root system creates channels in compacted soil. Water and air follow these passages. Beneficial fungi colonize the paths. The entire underground structure becomes a living fertilizer factory. Ancient agrarian societies understood this cycle. They planted comfrey at field edges and orchard borders. Modern science confirmed what tradition already knew. The plant contains 1.8-3.5% nitrogen, higher than most animal manures. Potassium levels reach 5-7%. These numbers explain why gardens transform within a single season. Documentation of comfrey use stretches back to ancient Greece. Physicians recorded its wound healing properties in 400 BCE. But agricultural applications remained the real treasure. Medieval monasteries grew it in dedicated plots. Monks understood its dual purpose, medicine for humans, vitality for soil. By the 1800s, British farmers conducted systematic trials. Results showed comfrey-fed crops outperformed manured fields. One acre of comfrey could fertilize 10 acres of vegetables. The information spread through farming communities. Then, industrial agriculture arrived. Chemical fertilizers promised convenience. Traditional knowledge became backward. By the mid-1900s, few farmers maintained comfrey patches. The FDA ban in 2001 targeted a declining practice anyway. But history reveals a pattern. Powerful, free solutions often face suppression. The ban specifically mentioned internal consumption and pyrrolizidine alkaloids. External use remained legal. Garden application remained legal. Growing it remained legal. Only one thing changed. Public awareness disappeared. Ancient agricultural texts tell a different story than modern warnings. The plant produces what soil microbes crave most. Fresh comfrey leaves contain the perfect carbon to nitrogen ratio for decomposition. Bacteria and fungi attack the material immediately. Within two or three weeks, leaves break down completely. What remains feeds plants directly. This speed surpasses traditional composting by months. The decomposition releases growth hormones naturally present in comfrey tissue. Allantoin, one such compound, stimulates cell division in nearby plants. Tomatoes grown with comfrey mulch show 30-40% yield, increases in documented trials.
The effect amplifies in poor soils. But another factor matters more. Comfrey accumulates silica in its leaves. This element strengthens plant cell walls. Pests find it harder to penetrate silica-rich tissues. Disease resistance improves. The biological cycle becomes self-reinforcing. More comfrey means healthier plants. Healthier plants resist stress better. Better resistance reduces fertilizer dependence. The system requires only one input, occasional water during establishment. After that, it runs on solar energy alone. No bags to buy, no trucks to deliver, no synthetic chemicals to apply. Just a plant doing what evolution designed it to do. Comfrey offers capabilities beyond simple fertilization. Its dense canopy suppresses weeds completely. Nothing grows beneath mature plants. This creates natural weed control without herbicides. The extensive root system prevents soil erosion on slopes. Rain cannot wash away topsoil anchored by 15-foot taproots. Beneficial insects colonize the purple-blue flowers. Bees gather nectar through extended bloom periods. Predatory insects shelter in the foliage, controlling garden pests naturally. The plant tolerates diverse conditions. Full sun or partial shade both work. Clay, loam, or sandy soils all support growth. Wet areas pose no problem. Comfrey thrives in boggy ground. Drought tolerance develops after establishment. These characteristics make it nearly foolproof, but the hidden advantage runs deeper. A single root cutting from an established plant generates a new colony. This means infinite expansion from minimal investment. Ancient farmers understood this multiplication principle. One purchased plant becomes hundreds within three years. The economic impact cannot be overstated. Modern fertilizer costs consume significant portions of gardening budgets. Comfrey eliminates that expense permanently. Implementation requires minimal effort. Plant root cuttings 18 inches apart in early spring. Water weekly during the first month. After that, the plant needs no maintenance. Begin harvesting when stems reach 2 feet tall. Cut 4 inches above ground level to preserve crown vigor. Process the material immediately for maximum effect. Chopping accelerates decomposition. Lay chopped leaves directly around hungry feeders like tomatoes, peppers, and squash. Apply a 2-inch layer. Refresh every 3 weeks during the growing season. For a liquid fertilizer, stuff fresh leaves into a bucket. Add water. Cover and wait 2 weeks. The resulting tea smells terrible but works miracles. Dilute 1 part tea to 10 parts water. Apply weekly. Container plants respond dramatically to comfrey tea. Root development intensifies. Flowering increases. Fruit set improves. For composting, layer comfrey with brown materials. The high nitrogen content balances carbon-rich items perfectly. Decomposition completes in half the normal time. Some gardeners create permanent comfrey trenches. They dig paths between beds and fill them with comfrey. Roots stay contained. Harvesting becomes systematic. Research institutions have studied comfrey extensively. The Henry Doubleday Research Association conducted multi-year trials. Results confirmed traditional claims. Nutrient analysis revealed exceptional mineral content. Protein levels reached 20 to 35% in dried material. This exceeds alfalfa the standard high-protein forage crop. Studies at agricultural universities measured yield impacts. Comfrey fertilized plots produced 25-45% more vegetables than control groups. The effect persisted across multiple crop types. Soil tests showed improved structure after three years of comfrey application. Earthworm populations tripled in comfrey amended beds. Beneficial fungal networks expanded measurably. Scientists identified the specific compounds responsible. Cytokinins promote cell growth. Auxins regulate plant development. These hormones occur naturally in comfrey tissue. No synthetic fertilizer contains this complexity. The research validated what practice already proved. But academic publications reach limited audiences. 
Most gardeners never encounter this data. The information remains buried in agricultural journals. Meanwhile, marketing budgets promote chemical solutions. The disconnect between evidence and practice grows wider each year. Common misconceptions prevent adoption. Some claim comfrey becomes invasive. The truth differs. Bocking 14, the standard cultivar, produces no viable seed. It spreads only if root pieces are moved deliberately. Established clumps stay exactly where planted. Another myth suggests difficulty in removal. While persistent, comfrey responds to simple control. Cutting stems repeatedly exhausts the root. Three months of biweekly cutting kills even mature plants. Some fear the FDA ban means danger. The restriction applied to internal capsules and teas containing specific alkaloid concentrations. External use in gardens carries zero legal risk. Growing the plant remains completely legal. Using it as mulch or fertilizer faces no restrictions. The final myth claims specialty fertilizers work better. Comparison tests prove otherwise. Comfrey outperforms commercial organic fertilizers in direct trials. It costs nothing after establishment. It requires no processing or packaging. It contains no fillers or synthetic additives. The plant simply does what it evolved to do. Concentrate nutrients and share them generously. Calculate the true cost of conventional fertilizing. A modest garden requires 50, 100 pounds of fertilizer annually. Organic options cost $30, $50 per season. Synthetic versions range from $20, $40. Over a decade, this totals $300, $500 minimum. Comfrey eliminates this expense completely. Initial investment, one packet of root cuttings costs $15 to $25. This provides 10 tau to 15 plants. Each plant produces 20-30 pounds of material per year. Total annual yield exceeds 300 pounds of high nitrogen fertilizer. The equivalent in purchased products would cost hundreds, but the calculation extends further. Comfrey improves soil structure over time. This reduces water needs. Lower irrigation costs compound the savings. Improved pest resistance means fewer interventions. No sprays to buy no treatments to apply. Healthier plants produce better yields. More vegetables mean fewer grocery purchases. The economic circle completes itself. One modest investment generates returns for decades. The plant lives 20-30 years with minimal care. Total lifetime value easily exceeds $3,000-$5,000. Yet modern gardening culture pushes expensive solutions. The disconnect serves commercial interests, not gardeners. Understanding comfrey means understanding a larger pattern. Nature provides complete systems. These systems work without external inputs. They build fertility instead of depleting it. Ancient cultures based entire agricultural economies on such principles. Modern practice abandoned this wisdom for short-term convenience. The results are visible everywhere. Depleted soils, dependent systems, rising costs, environmental damage, but alternatives exist. Comfrey represents one piece of a forgotten puzzle. Other plants offer similar benefits. Nettle accumulates different mineral profiles. Yarrow concentrates specific nutrients. Barrage attracts different beneficial insects. Together, these plants create resilient ecosystems. They require no purchases, they need no delivery trucks, they produce no pollution, they simply grow, concentrate nutrients, and share them freely. This knowledge survives in old agricultural texts. Indigenous practices preserve it. The information waits for those willing to look beyond commercial narratives. One plant can replace an entire category of products. The question becomes, how many other solutions hide in plain sight? Comfrey stands as living proof of a simple truth. Nature already solved the fertility problem. Solutions don't require laboratories or factories. They grow freely when given the chance. The FDA restriction changed nothing about the plant's agricultural power. It only changed public perception. That shift served specific interests. Meanwhile, the plant continues doing what it has always done.
It mines minerals from deep soil. It concentrates them in accessible forms. It shares this wealth with everything around it. Ancient farmers knew this. Modern research confirms it. Only marketing denies it. Those who plant comfrey escape a perpetual expense cycle. They gain self-sufficiency. They reconnect with principles that sustained civilizations. One plant replaces all fertilizer forever. The secret was never really hidden. It was simply ignored.